The night is thick with heat and windless humidity. I am restless and stimulated, my body temperature rising in the dark room as I stare and am consumed by an extraordinary McCree image. Drop curtain. I have no idea what McCree intends by this image, his title notwithstanding, but I mean to write what it means to me because I cannot quench the fire in my bones until I do so. We don't need to know what an artist meant in order to understand what the art means to us. And it's a credit to McCree's particular genius that his art is multifaceted and so deeply layered that one may burn through layers and not come to an end. There is such a ceaseless energy to his work, controlled by an adroit handling of composition, that viewers like myself see many seemingly contradictory things until they realize that contradictions form an integral part of Macri's oeuvre. This may well account for an incredible tension in many of his pieces, a tension his admirers, I suspect, often feel themselves. I step outside in the heavy night, imagining I hear thunder in the distance, hoping to see constellations of stars, but do not. Well past midnight, even the fireflies have ceased flickering through the gardens. Sleep is not possible. Ideas heat my brain, as they always do when I expose myself to McCree's art. Expose is the right word. So I return to my computer screen, ignore the title of Drop Curtain, and leap into the fire. Heat attracted to heat, fire to fire. I say fire deliberately with full awareness of both its destructive and creative properties, with full awareness of its actual and metaphorical associations. I enter the image as the image enters me, immersing myself in the destructive element in order to create meaning in this darkened room at night with no other light except the burning on the screen. I sense rather than see fierce fires and fiery presences. I make associations with other McCree works, which seemingly have little to do with Drop Curtain, but still reflect consistent aspects of his art. I respond to subtle temptations, desiring seduction and destruction. My heart and imagination simmer and smoke. I am emulated and yet alive. Both body and mind are stretched out on a hot anvil, feeling the heat, sizzling but not physically harmed, although molten in the forge and waiting for the pounding of the hammer, for the artist as blacksmith. For some reason I recall the witches of Macbeth, stirring their brew, expecting Macbeth to appear on the scene. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Even if it is a smoky forge, the metaphor is apt. I don't believe McCree is thinking of malfiance in this strange and wonderful image, although he might well be. If I stare long enough into the screen, I imagine that I can make out what appears to be a nebulous figure with outlines of head, chest, stomach, legs, perhaps quasi-demonic in nature, both welcoming and forbidding. Like the witches, however, McCree doesn't determine what viewers think. He does understand what they may desire, consciously or otherwise, and is nothing if not the artist of unspoken desires. The witches, in canting over their witchy brew, know what burns in Macbeth's heart, but they never put it there. For he approaches them aflame with his own particular frustrations and lust for power, just as we approach Macree's art with our own fantasies and lusts of one kind or another. Drop Curtain consists of vital swirling lines, brilliant yellow and gold coloring, Fibonacci spirals in the smoke, deliberately imprecise detailing, hint of a womb in the center, and an impression that something or someone of unspecified gender is coming out of primal chaos to make itself known. My mind swirls with memories of a great mythological forge, and Hephaestus creating a fine-meshed indestructible net to cast over his wife Aphrodite and her lover Ares, caught in the act of flegante delecto. Fiery forge or boiling stew of feelings? The image also leads me to think of an invisible force field in the dark room where I can see nothing except what McCree offers and what my fancies depict or project. 
I conceive a metaphor outlining the ultimate mystery, an allegory of poetic psychics, if you will, a fundamental belief in the creative energy of Eros in nature and in the human imagination. The hammer pounds again and again, and this viewer's body is transformed by imaginary fires. I'd even say transfigured, but what connotes a holiness I do not possess. Oh yes, I am aroused as my appreciation of McCree's art at times travels in directions that often surprise me, but I know to be true. I am speaking of feelings even as my intellect tries to make sense of so deep and complex an image. In order to clarify what I feel and see, I go to other McCree images and portraits to seek confirmation and parallels, for example, to the stunning portrait Orgone Box. The title is borrowed from Wilhelm Reich's theory of Orgon, an etymological combination of orgasm and hormone, the vital creative essential sexual force of the universe in which we all share, and the frustration of which leads to disease and misery. It matters not a whit if there is any scientific validity to this concept, even though McCree can be scientifically true when he needs to be. He possesses a great grasp of botanical and zoological facts that serve him well. In this image, though, McCree uses orgone poetically or metaphorically, just as many artists and writers have relied upon various Freudian and Jungian theories in their art, for their poetic rather than scientific truths. In some respects, Drop Curtain is a fiery explosion of energy and potential, reminiscent of McCree's quiet and lovely image, Epizukery, Estivation. This erupting pod surrounded by brilliant yellow representing the force of the sun's heat will scatter brown seeds to infiltrate and impregnate the natural world once the period of rest, Estivation, has passed. Indeed, if I place Epizachery next to Drop Curtain, I see remarkable similarities in coloring, structure, and intent by an artist adept at creating subtle images of layered or multiple sexualities. I am more concerned at the moment with Orgone Box and my own preoccupations. Even though I sit in the dark fixated by McCree's fantastic light, I am ablaze with inner fire and write under the hot force of hammer, in some respects, orgone box should be coupled, since coupling is intrinsic to McCree's art, with another stirring portrait, Belt Apoptosis, the title of which points to the artist's awareness of scientific facts, of the presence of dying in life to make way for a new life, a process cells undergo with regularity. Along with a host of other admirers, I can recognize the cohesion and unity of his collective work because one piece naturally, inevitably, leads to another. The very name of Drop Curtain refers to lifting the veil, to discovery and revelation, exposure, to costume and design and theatricality in McCree's collective Ouvreur. Aside from the highly stylized makeup, variations of which are applied on several McCree portraits, and the headpiece, also present elsewhere, and the downward-looking austere gaze typical of many of his faces and his very fine sense of color, I am struck by the mesh superimposed on the body like a net forged by Hephaestus. Perhaps the play of subdued flames shadows the skin, as if the figure is looking down at a prone acolyte or an anvil or altar after the act of creation has occurred. Priestly, perhaps, as some viewers have noted, also androgynous, contemplative, decidedly and wonderfully pagan to the mind when placed next to Drop Curtain, the portrait of Orgone Box alerts me to erotic action and its aftermath. Breathless and overtaken by this penetrating art, depleted and rejuvenated, having reached a point of sweet stasis after fierce compulsion, I wish reluctantly to end, for it is late, I step outside again in the night, hot and smoky as a forge, gripped by a realization, orgasmic in intensity, that I have apprehended McCree's truth in Drop Curtain, as it applies to my own person, fantasies, and feelings. And yes, I would submit willingly again and again to the hypnotic presence in the forge and come away remade by fire.